Hey, I'm Jay. And I'm Jamie. And today we're going to build a countdown clock to Halloween. Or Christmas? Or both. Halloween was yesterday and we're kind of sad that the season's over, but we're not giving up yet. We're going to make a countdown clock from Nightmare Before Christmas. Now this is perfect because it combines Halloween and Christmas, so we're keeping Halloween alive in our hearts. <laughs> We have always been kind of in love with Tim Burton's art style and Nightmare Before Christmas is like a perfect example of all the stuff we love. So we're super excited to build this prop. So the countdown clock has two basic parts. There's the box, which has numbers in it and it's just how many days till Halloween. And then on top of that, there's a really cool gothic looking wreath. As always, we want you guys to be able to follow along with the build, so we created some plans. Those are going to be available on our website, and they have templates and sizes and all the stuff you need, so definitely check that out. There's a link below in the description, and there's links to all the stuff we used in the description below as well. The first step for us was to decide, you know, what size we wanted it to be and kind of design all the parts. So we went to SketchUp to do that. What we did in here was basically figure out, you know, the angles of the box, kind of what size it was going to be, where all the little windows for the calendar and all that stuff was going to go. And then we were able to actually transfer that out to templates. So the cool thing about this box is you can build it out of a lot of different materials. You could use cardboard, you could use foam core, you could use balsa wood, you could use plywood. Where are you going to use plywood? Because it's kind of what we have. If you want to use wood but you don't have tools, you don't have saws and stuff like that, there's this really cool wood called balsa wood which is nice and hard but it's also soft enough to cut with a utility knife. So you could grab those templates and you could literally just cut out all these pieces with a knife from balsa wood. We're going to cut out the pieces with our X-Carve, which is a really cool CNC machine that we have and we're just doing that because it's going to be the fastest way for us to get this all together. Obviously you don't need one of these things but it is super cool and we wanted to show it to you guys. Now that we have all the pieces cut out, it's time to start assembling our box. Since we're using plywood, we thought that wood glue would be a good place to start, so we put wood glue on all of the edges and basically tried to align all the pieces and then use clamps to kind of hold them there. That worked a little bit. We wouldn't do it that way again. It was really hard to put it together. So what we ended up doing was using hot glue and then just going in the inside corners and kind of gluing everything up that way. And that worked a lot better. Whether you're using wood or foam core, cardboard or whatever, it's usually a good idea to use a coat of primer before you do your main base coat of paint. Since we want our box to look like a dark metal, we used some dark gray primer and hit it with a light coat and that was it. The prop we're trying to replicate has like these little rivets, they, they're kind of like bolts that are holding on the face of the box. So we're going to actually use some of these little rhinestones that we found just at the craft store, you know, for like a couple bucks. And we're going to hit those with a coat of primer as well. And then they have sticky backs so we can just kind of pull them off and then stick them on to the front and that worked great. So to paint the box, we're going to use a bunch of different metallic colors. I've got silver and gold and a copper color, and then we're going to mix that with some black and white to make different shades and variations of each one. Now when I first started painting the box, I was using some long strokes and I was trying to imitate kind of a brushed metal look, and it worked okay, but I wasn't in love with it. So what I ended up doing was taking a kind of chip brush, like a really gross brush, and doing a light coat of stippling of all of the different colors I have. Stippling. Um, <laughs> I've never heard that word. No. What is stippling? Counting. You heard it here first. <laughs> Probably not actually. I heard it here first. So I stippled on a light coat of the different metallic colors, mostly black and silver with a few accents of the, the gold and copper and it turned out really nice. It looked like metal. Whenever you paint something like this, don't be afraid to try stuff because we tried the first thing, it didn't really work that well, we just let it dry and tried something totally different and we're glad we did. 
Once the metal part was done, we painted the little rivets. Those were kind of a brownish coppery color. And once that was done, I stippled a little black on top to give it an aged look. And then I went back once all of it was dry and added some rusty, drippy thingies. So while I was painting the box, Jay was playing with blocks. <laughs> hey, my job was to make this thing actually function. So the way that we made the little calendar on the top of the box is we used cubes of wood that we got from the craft store. In the top shelf of the box, there's three windows and there's gonna be three numbers that are displayed to show you the amount of days. So what we decided to do is get three blocks of wood, which are actually two inch cubes, and we started off by painting them white with a white spray primer. So for the numbers on the blocks, we are terrible at freehanding. We didn't want to do that. So instead, we printed out the numbers that we wanted to use and cut them out with a little X-Acto knife and use those for our stencils. Once we had the little stencil things cut out, we used some temporary spray adhesive and basically sprayed them and then stuck the little numbers on the blocks and then we just used some black acrylic paint to color them in. And we repeated the same process for the little Days Till Halloween insert as well. The only thing that happened with that one though was that the wood itself was kind of a rough surface so the stencil didn't lay down super flat. So when we painted it in, it kind of leaked underneath the paper and it was a bit of a mess when we pulled off the stencil. To fix it, we took some white acrylic paint and a small brush and just carefully went around the edges. So let's rewind here. When we got our little blocks home and we put them in the inserts, we discovered they were way too short and there was a big old gap there. You know, I did plan this, but I just planned it badly. There's a difference. <laughs> what we did to fix it was we ended up just creating a second front face and sticking that on and kind of gluing it in place. And then to account for you know the new height of the windows, we put three little pieces of wood inside there, glued them together and put them in there and that lifted the blocks up enough to fit in the new windows. Yeah, it's creative problem solving. That's right. <laughs> Once everything was painted, we took a little bit of super glue and glued in place the Days Till Halloween sign. So now it was time for the wreath. For the base of the wreath, we used this really cool pre-made grapevine wreath that we got at the craft store. If you don't want to use a pre-made thing, just go get some sticks and kind of wrap them in a circle. The wreath in the film itself is just kind of black and there's not really anything to it, but there's a really cool replica prop that's actually at Disneyland, which they went a little further with it and added like some berries and leaves and some other cool stuff. And so we modeled ours after that one instead. So we got a bunch of different berries and leaves and fun looking things from the craft store and tried them all out. I think this is pretty neat. We've never made a wreath before, but uh, I mean, it looks... It looks like a wreath? It looks like a wreath. It's Halloween and Christmassy. It's like a... <laughs> in the movie, a bunch of people who are like, only know how to do Halloween are trying to do Christmas, and I think that's like the perfect metaphor for what we're doing right now. <laughs> the back of the wreath has an insert, which kind of looks like a clock, but it's not actually a clock because it has the months of the year instead of the time. So we didn't need to put an actual clock mechanism back there, but we did use our X-Carve to carve out some really cool looking bat wing shaped clock hands. For the months on the clock, we use the same stencil technique as we did on the numbers, but for the spider web, in the film it looks like it's kind of a freehand spider web, so we decided to take a stab at it and freehand it ourselves. To attach the clock hands to the face, we drilled some holes through all three pieces and then we stuck a nail right through the middle, clipped off the back, and then we used some hot glue to secure it in. To attach the plate to the wreath, we drilled a couple of holes around the edges and then used some wire to hold it in place. A lot of times when you see this prop, the wreath and the box are attached as one single piece. But if you watch the film, that's not actually how it is. The wreath is way back on a wall and the box is kind of up front. So we're going to do it that way. We're going to have the wreath hang up on a wall right above the box, which is going to be on a shelf. 
So if you want to hang both of them up, you totally can. Just hang them separately, like one right on top of the other, and it will look great. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can support our channel by hitting the like button, subscribing, and telling all of your friends how hopefully great this video is. And leave us a comment, let us know what you like, let us know if you built one of these yourselves, we'd love to see it. To attach the Batwing... Uh, fa -la -la. Fa -la -la. Fa -la -la.